Hi, so back in the 80s, hard drives really took off. They got bigger, and the bigger they got, the more they could store, so the bigger they got, until, of course, they reached a problem. They got so big that they were prone to failure. They kept crashing, because when they crashed, you lost all of your data, and all of your data was on this one hard drive, and that was you basically up the creek without a paddle. Now, I love it that the story for one industry can cross so easily into the story for another industry, because of course wind turbines, based on a Dutch technology from the 16th century, are just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And they get bigger because the amount of energy produced is related to the square of the radius of the turbine. So the bigger the turbine gets, then the square of the radius is the energy production. So it's hugely tempting just to make these things bigger and bigger. And of course, mega engineering, who doesn't love mega engineering? It, awesome to see this stuff because they really just leave you with your mouth hanging open looking at these things. The current world record for wind turbine length is 107 metres. That's bigger than the wing of 747. These are astounding machines that do an awesome job with only one tiny problemette. And the problemette is when they break all of your production is lost just in the same way as hard drives. There's another issue is that the weight and the cost of a turbine increases with the cube of the radius, whereas the energy producers increases with the square of the radius. So at some stage or other, the increase of cost means that the value of the energy produced is actually going to be less than the cost of producing it because of that relationship. So there's big issues involved. Now, the way it was solved by computing was something called the RAID system, which stood for the Redundant Array of Inexpensive Drives. Instead of having one great big drive to store all of your energy on, oh, sorry, all of your information on, you had lots of little drives. And these little drives were bigger than the big drive, and they would save duplicate copies of your information. So if one crashed, most of your information was okay. If you're depending on how much redundancy, all of your information could be okay, so not everything was lost when one of the drive fails. Now, a Norwegian company have latched onto this, and they've created a system called the Wind Catcher. And the Wind Catcher looks like this. So what we've got there is essentially a RAID system. It's a, a redundant array of inexpensive turbines. So I guess a RAID system. Now, the turbine, when it covers a swept area, is the area that you're interested in. On a square like their design, then you're actually getting the corners, and that can double the amount of effective area that that turbine can actually capture. Obviously, the turbines themselves are relatively small, but they are much cheaper to make. Now, the energy produced from a wind turbine increases exponentially as the wind speed increases. Unfortunately, with larger turbines, of course, the wind speed has to be limited. It has to be limited because the speed at the tip of the blade is supersonic when you get to 100 metres. And, of course, we're at the limit of what those materials can do. So you're not going to be able to increase that blade exponentially. You're going to have to be able to increase that blade until they basically the tip flies off because the speed at the tip is just too great. With the smaller ones, you don't have the same speed limit that you have on the larger ones, and so you can get that exponential increase. The estimate, actually, from wind catcher is that the same area of turbine put in a wind catcher system can produce five times the energy of a standard single pole turbine, and that's got to be super impressive, hasn't it? So not only does the cost go down, the energy production goes up, and interestingly enough, so does the lifetime. Now, the average lifetime of a uh, wind turbine, or the design lifetime of a wind turbine, is 20 to 25 years. In practice, they change those blades about every 10 years, and of course that is hugely problematic in itself. The design lifetime of the wind catcher system is supposed to be about 50 years. So these things last twice as long. They produce five times the energy, and the cost of production is lower than a traditional wind turbine. And it fits with the way I think about these things, and it takes the experience of the computer industry and translates it directly into the wind turbine industry, which fits my philosophy. I often think that 
experiences from one field can cross into experiences from another field. So it's important to my mind not to be narrow in your view, but to have a much broader view generally, so you can bring that broader view to your specific interest. And I think it empowers and improves your specific interest. And I think that this wind uh, catcher system is actually just an example of that, which is just an example of the RAID system, but still absolutely fascinating in what they're doing. Now, if wind catcher are actually uh, correct in what they're doing and correct in what they're saying, then obviously it will dramatically change how we think of wind turbines. When you're making a wind turbine for yourself, of course, what you tend to do is make the biggest you can afford that's going to produce the most energy. Maybe that's the wrong way. Maybe we should be looking at an array of inexpensive turbines that can be aggregated together to give you the energy you need. In which case, if you have 100 little turbines and one breaks, you're going to lose 1% of your energy output. If you want big turbine and it breaks, well, you're going to be reading by candlelight. It's also why we've been working on these wind walls, because the wind walls reflect quite strongly what wind catcher have actually been proposing and doing. Anyway, to my mind, the aggregate of inexpensive turbines is going to be pretty much an interesting, if not the way forward. Because remember, wind energy is seen as the cheapest and quickest way of getting renewables up and running properly. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please remember to like and subscribe.